Hi folks, welcome back to the last video in 8.8. .8. And in this section, we're gonna talk about dot products and also how to find the angle between two vectors. So the dot product, or sometimes called the inner product, okay, um, of two vectors, let's say we have u equals u1, u2, and v equals v1, v2, then u dot v is a u1, v1 plus u2, v2. Okay. In other words, we take the horizontal components and we multiply them. And then we take our vertical components and we multiply those. And then we add them together. And what we end up with is a scalar quantity. And long story short, the dot product generally helps us see sort of like how much two vectors are sort of in the same direction, okay? Now, we will use the term dot product, but as you sort of move up in mathematics or uh, engineering, you might find a more general term, the inner product, okay? So the dot product is more of a special case, whereas the inner product is more broad, all right? But in this class, we're really going to be focusing on just pro uh, the process of finding the dot product and then also one use of it where we can find the angle between two vectors. OK. All right. So let's take a look at example nine. In example nine, we have A equals negative five comma three and B equals three comma negative seven. And so if I have A dot B and we need to be really careful here, this is not saying we multiply. This dot is literally for the dot product, okay? So what we're going to do then is we're going to take our horizontal components. We're going to multiply them. So we'll get ooh, negative 5 times 3. And then we're going to add them to our vertical components multiply, which is 3 times negative 7, okay? So again, these are the vertical components. And these are the horizontal components. I'm going to go ahead and do the mental math here with negative 15 plus negative 21. And so let's see, what do I get? I get a negative 36. OK, so my dot product here of A dot B is negative 36. Now, we'll notice in part B that I have B dot A. OK, so now I'm switching the order. And the purpose of this question is really to see whether order matters or not. OK, so in B dot A, we're now going to have three times negative five plus negative seven times three. And we should notice if I keep these on the same screen, we get negative 15 plus negative 21 which it gives us negative 36, okay? And it turns out for dot products that the order in which we do them does not matter, okay? It's kind of like addition. It's kind of like multiplication. The order that we dot vectors in doesn't matter, okay? All right, so let's pause there for a moment, and I'll give you some time to take a look at examples 10 if you'd like to go ahead and do that one on your own and then come back here and check answers. All right, hopefully that gave you enough time to go ahead and uh, do these computations. So you'll notice now we're not in standard form, but rather we're in rectangular form. But it's going to work the same way where A dot B is going to be taking the two horizontal components and multiplying them taking the two vertical components and multiplying those. Sorry about that. So we're taking the two horizontal components and multiplying them, taking the two vertical components, multiplying those, and then adding them together. So one times two plus six times negative five will give us verticals, horizontals, and then the sum. So we get two plus negative 30, which will give us negative 28 as the dot product between A and B in example 10. Okay, remember, we do want to get a single number. We should get a scalar answer when we find the dot product between two vectors. 
All right, let's take a look at B dot B. So this is going to give us 2 times 2 plus negative 5 times negative 5, which gives us 4 plus 25. We want to be really careful about our signs here. And that gives us a quantity of 29. So not so bad in terms of the process. It really is important, though, that we know we get a scalar quantity. We don't get a vector quantity. All right, last topic here. One of the uses of the dot product is it allows us to find the angle between two vectors. And that can be helpful when we're trying to see, like, are they in the same direction? Are they in different directions? You know, we want to kind of be able to tell what's happening there. So if you have theta as an angle and your vectors u and v are both non-zero, okay, then cosine of this angle is equal to the dot product of u times v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v, okay? Another way we might want to think about it is theta is just the inverse cosine of u dot v over magnitude of u times magnitude of v, okay? In other words, check this out. This, oh, let's pick a bit better color there, u over u prime it's kind of like our unit vector for u. And then v over v prime is kind of like the unit vector for v, is it not? So really what we have here is we have two unit vectors and we're dotting them to help us find um, sort of what that angle is in between there, okay? So let's go ahead and solve. So I've got cosine theta equals, let's see, a dot b. So that's going to be 9 times 5 plus 0 times negative 4. All right, because I'm taking my horizontal components and I'm multiplying them, taking my vertical components, multiplying them, and then adding them together divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So the magnitude of u is going to be square root of 9 squared plus 0 squared. And the magnitude of b is going to be the square root of 5 squared plus negative 4 squared. Okay. And it's okay for this to be a lot of different uh, numbers going on. Now, it would be really important, thinking about the myopen math, I'm thinking about getting an exact value, to not round anything until we take our inverse cosine, okay? So cosine, well, let's go this way. Let's see what we get. 9 times 5 is 45 over 0, or times 0 plus zero times negative four is zero. And then square root of nine squared is just nine. And then let's see, I get square root of 25 plus 16 is gonna give me square root of 41, okay? So, you know, I think I'm gonna reduce a little bit here because I noticed that five goes, or nine goes into both of those. So I end up with five and one. And really, I have cosine of theta equals 5 over root 41. So now, if I want to make sure I get an exact value here, I'm going to take theta equals the inverse cosine of 5 over root 41. Okay, and so inverse cosine of 5 divided by square root of 41 is going to equal 38.6. Five, six, six degrees. Okay. Now, I know we've talked a little bit about how sometimes our calculator doesn't give us the exact value. So, how do we know? Um, I think one way to just double check is to kind of sketch these vectors and see what that angle in between there kind of looks like. All right. So, 
vector a is just 9i, it just kind of goes in this direction, OK? And vector b, 5 minus 4j, kind of looks like it's down here somewhere. And so this angle is 38.66 degrees. That's what we're finding, OK? All right. So got one last example. This is a good time to pause if you need to, try it out on your own, and then we'll come back and check our answers. All right. So if you're ready to check answers, let's go ahead. We should have four times one plus negative three times two over the square root of four squared plus negative three squared times the square root of one squared plus two squared. All right, I'm gonna do a little computation. I get four minus six is negative two over, this should be square root, nope, that should just be five times square root of five, okay? Nothing I can really reduce here. So what I'm gonna type into the calculator is inverse cosine of negative two over five root five, okay? Negative two over five root five. And so I'm going to do inverse cosine of negative 2 divided by 5 root 5. And I get 100.305 degrees. OK, and so what that means is if I were to sketch these two vectors like I did up here, the angle in between them would be 100.305 degrees, all right? So we talked a little bit about dot product, but also this idea of how do we find the dot product and what are its uses, right? We can use it to find the angle between two vectors. All right, my friends, that's it for 8.8. .8. Thanks for joining me and go ahead and get started working on the quiz. See you later.